Hello and welcome to the DSP project, your fix of music production and technology. I am your host Rupert Brown and in this episode I want to walk you through a build I did of some diffusers. Before I get started with that though, I want to tell you about loopmasters.com, fantastic sample website. If you head down there and use the code DSP10, you get 10% off your entire order. As well as Plugin Boutique, which is a, uh, a plugin website obviously that has many different developers there. You've even got some free plugins as well. Again, the same code, if you use DSP10, you'll get 10% off your order, as well as I get a small cut out of it so it helps support the show. On top of that, I want to talk about DSP Mastering, which is my mastering business. If you head down to dspmastering.com, you can find out more about it. We've got a beautiful studio here with some fantastic analog equipment. So if you'd like to hear what your, what your music sounds like put through that, then please get in touch with me via that. So on to the diffuser. Now, if you're not familiar with what a diffuser is, it's a kind of acoustic treatment most commonly used in studios. So you may be familiar with absorption technology, so uh, or absorption products rather so if you think about like studio foam or big bass traps that it sort of absorbs the sound now uh, absorption is great we've got heaps of absorption in the studio here um, but you can't have it over every square inch of every wall because the room becomes too dead um, in every room there's a bit of natural reverberance that happens and when, if there's none no, no reverberance at all none of those cues then it's very strange for your brain and it, it's not a very pleasant um, environment to work in so we use we employ different forms of uh, acoustic technology in, in this case diffusion so a diffuser looks a bit like this here's the ones that I made and you can see sort of all different heights of uh, of timber there and to give it a very basic idea of what happens if you imagine you've got the rear wall of your studio and you've got a sound wave the sound wave comes along and if your uh, wall is flat it will hit that and that will sort of be pretty much perfectly reflected back and, and you'll you'll that will hit you in the back of the head um, and so you'll hear that with that reflection it happens so quickly that your brain perceives it as the same thing as the sound that comes from the front but it, uh, it sort of muddles and muddles everything slightly so um, with a, with diffusion what happens is the sound wave hits and you've got all these different height pieces of timber and it scatters the sound and uh, importantly it scatters the sound evenly so there's a very specific mathematical pattern that goes behind it I know it looks like a bunch of just random staggered blocks but it's actually been figured out by some very clever person in the BBC who's a lot smarter than I but the good news is there's now software available so people who are not as smart as them like me can uh, can take a, take advantage of that and build something that is still mathematically accurate so um, that's the concept behind it now let's take a quick look at how it was built so here I am sanding the blocks down, um, it can be quite a long and tedious job depending on the quality of finish that you want. Uh, I recommend medicating if you're that way inclined as well as find yourself a good podcast. Joe Rogan Podcast, check it out! The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day, Joe Rogan Podcast by night, all day! That will be familiar to some of you. The Joe Rogan podcast is something I've been getting a lot of enjoyment out of recently. There are some very interesting conversations to be had there, so uh, I recommend you check it out. So uh, by this point, I'd already bought the timber in long lengths and cut them down to the appropriate sizes. You can see the two boxes on the, on the left of the screen there. That's only two of the three diffuser parts, and it really did take a, a, a long time to get that kind of finish, but uh, it depends on how picky you want to be as to how much time this process is going to take up. So here it's a little hard to see, but I've penciled in a grid a a across this, this backing board. It's a piece of ply backing board there, and I've uh, put a number in uh, between 0 and 4, so I know exactly what size block I need to put into each place. Now, um, one thing I would change if I did this again is I would probably use a thicker backing board. So the ply I used was only, I think it was about a 9mm thick piece of ply which had a, a bit of a bow in it, a bit of flex. Um, so I, I'd recommend using something a bit thicker, maybe like a 20mm or something a, a bit sturdier I probably, I probably should have used. Um, but besides, besides that, it, was, uh, it all went pretty smoothly really. Um, you can see it's quite a quick process, it doesn't take particularly long to, uh, to glue all these uh, blocks down and I'm just using a standard PVA wood glue. You don't need to glue the sides either, I'm just putting glue on the, the base of each of the blocks. 
Now, the software that I use to, to get all the uh, calculations is a program called uh, Acoustic Calculator. I will put a download link to it in the description if you'd like to check it out yourself. It is unfortunately PC only software, so uh, you'll have to find uh, either a virtual machine or, or a, a PC computer if you haven't got one lying around. Um, and it, it's, it's very straightforward, basically you just put in the, the specific frequencies that you're trying to target and it tells you exactly uh, how many pieces you need, what length they need to be um, and in which position they're located. So even, uh, even someone as simple as me can follow it, it's uh, pretty straightforward, I think anyone could do it. And uh, so here we are doing just the, the final the final one of the three. You can see the other two there in the background. Um, I've just done it in a, a simple pine timber. If you um, wanted something a bit flasher, you had a bit more to spend, you could use a, a nice hardwood. I might stain these, um, stain these later potentially, but at the moment I've just got them as a bare pine. And this is the finished product. So you can see there's three of them there and they're just sitting side by side. Easy. So there you have it. While it is quite a labor intensive job, it's actually not that difficult. You don't have to be a master joinery specialist to come up with something that I think looks quite groovy by the end of it. Finally, DSP Mastering, we've got a special going at the moment where we're running a loyalty card system, so every third track is free. So you pay for the first two tracks and then the third track's free, um, pay for fourth and fifth, sixth tracks free, and on and on. Uh, I'm not sure how long we'll run that for, but as of the time of recording, that deal is still going. If you're interested in more videos like these about music production, then head down to the dspproject.com uh, and sign up for the mailing list. If you're on the site, you'll find the uh, the little sign up down there on your top right. Um, you should see where you can sign up on the mailing list and then we'll keep you updated with any new uh, updates. So that is it for this episode. I'll see you next week. <laughs>